Merci d'être venu. Donc, euh, tout d'abord, euh, j'aimerais dire que, que nos pensées continuent d'être avec ceux qui souffrent euh, en conséquence des feux de forêt euh, à travers euh, le pays. Um, et je remercie euh, le ministre Bill Blair de nous avoir fourni des brefages um, et je remercie euh, des, des forces qui ont travaillé pour, répandre, pour y répondre. Um, le, les conservateurs euh, revendiquent euh, que le gouvernement um, agrandit euh, le, les capacités de répondre aux feux de forêt. Uh, nous avons besoin de, de davantage de ressources pour le faire, davantage euh, d'avions euh, et euh, de pompiers. Euh, les syndicats euh, de, des pilotes ont, avaient déjà euh, adverti les gouvernements de tous niveaux de la nécessité d'avoir davantage de pilotes. Euh, donc, il nous faut un plan d'action national pour euh, agrandir euh, nos capacités de répondre à ces euh, feux forêts pour l'avenir, euh, tout en reconnaissant que les, beaucoup de, de ces ressources sont, sont provinciales, provinciales. Le gouvernement fédéral peut bien coordonner ça euh, et peut avoir davantage de ressources au niveau national. J'ai avec moi euh, mon ministre fantôme euh, d'urgence euh, nationale, Dane Lloyd, qui sera euh, disponible pour répondre aux, à, à ces genres de questions. Um, hier, j'ai prononcé un discours de quatre heures afin d'empêcher de, le déficit, le, le budget inflationniste et déficitaire de Justin Trudeau qui menace la sécurité économique des Canadiens. De, depuis que M. Trudeau a introduit son budget, on a de nouvelles informations, de nouvelles informations de très, très graves. Premièrement, le Fonds, international, Fonds monétaire international a dit que le Canada est le pays le plus à risque pour une crise de défaut hypothécaire. Deuxièmement, l'inflation est encore à la hausse, quelque chose que le premier ministre a dit n'allait jamais arriver. Et troisièmement, il y a eu une augmentation dans les taux d'intérêt. Il y a 2 billions de dollars de, de, de dettes pour les familles canadiennes. En fait, les dettes des familles canadiennes sont plus des familles canadiennes sont plus grandes que notre économie en entier. Si ces gens-là qui ont ces grandes hypothèques doivent payer une augmentation de 3 ou 4 dans leur hypothèque au cours des prochains trois ans, il peut y avoir une crise hypothécaire massive. C'est un vrai risque. Euh, je m'en inquiète beaucoup. Et évidemment, comme pro futur premier ministre, c'est moi qui vais devoir gérer cette catastrophe. Um, le premier ministre devrait reconnaître qu'il y a une vraie crise qui s'en vient pour les, les gens qui ont ces hypothèques. Il doit avouer que le budget qui ajoute un autre 60 milliards de dollars de l'inflation, ça, ça veut dire 4 200 dollars pour chaque famille canadienne, ça n'a pas de bon sens. Ça risque une crise financière. Donc, Aujourd'hui, je lui dis, M. Trudeau, retirez votre budget. Annulez vos vacances d'été. Euh, Mettez le Parlement au travail pendant l'été pour réécrire le budget. Un budget qui éliminera les déficits afin de réduire l'inflation et les taux d'intérêt. Et annulez toutes les hausses de taxes que vous, vous promettez de mettre sur les épaules des Canadiens. Nous, les conservateurs, sommes prêts à travailler pendant tout l'été pour réécrire le budget, un nouveau budget qui va éliminer le déficit, qui va annuler toutes les augmentations de taxes. Ce n'est pas une question partisane. Il faut mettre à côté les considérations partisanes et travailler pour éviter cette crise grave qui s'en vienne pour les gens qui ont ces hypothèques. Annuler le budget, annuler les vacances, travailler pour rétablir un budget responsable qui va protéger les maisons et le futur financier de nos citoyens. 
C'est ça que nous revendiquons aujourd'hui en tant que conservateurs et on va continuer de travailler pour empêcher cette 6, 60 milliards de dollars de l'inflation au Sénat, à la Chambre des communes et à partout. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. First of all, our thoughts are with uh, the people suffering from the forest fires across the country. Conservatives are calling for a stronger federal coordinated coordination and action plan to respond to these types of fires. Uh, we believe that the federal government can do more to coordinate provincial assets, to have more federal assets, uh, and to have uh, better reaction the next time a fire like this happens. And I have here with me my shadow minister of emergency preparedness, Dane Lloyd, to answer more questions on our call on the government in that regard. Yesterday I spoke for four hours to stop the inflationary tax hiking Trudeau budget. Now I did this uh, not just because I disagree with the irresponsible overspending that has caused the inflation, I long believed that, but because I believe we're headed to a very serious crisis. Since the Prime Minister introduced his budget, there have been three major developments. One, the International Monetary Fund has identified Canada as the country most at risk of a mortgage meltdown, because we have uh, the biggest household debt of any country in the G7, $2 trillion of household debt. In fact, our households have as much debt as the entire GDP combined. When, second, inflation is now again on the rise. Something the Prime Minister promised was not going to happen. He claimed inflation was just going to fall. Now it's rising. A surprise when you pour tens of billions of dollars more of spending into the economy, you get more inflation. And th third, the unexpected increase in interest rates that is going to be another uppercut to overly indebted Canadians who already can't afford their bills. I want you to think about this for a second. If, this is, if you have a family that's paying $3,000 a month on mortgages and they experience what the Bank of Canada projects will be a 40% increase in their monthly mortgage payment, that's $1,300 a month, which is almost $15,000 a year when half of our households don't even have $200 left in their bank account. What is going to happen over the next three years as all of these mega mortgages renew at these higher rates? We're going to have defaults. We're going to have mass fire sales of homes as people uh, can't make their payment and all they can do is put their house in the market but there won't be anyone to buy them because no one else can afford to pay the rates either. This could be a major financial meltdown. This is not me saying it, it's the IMF. It's the Bank of Canada. And the Prime Minister has to recognize these facts have changed since he introduced his budget. And so I'm calling on him to do the honourable thing, to put aside his pride and his personal ego and cancel this budget. And he should also cancel his summer vacation. And Conservatives are prepared to work all summer long to rewrite a budget that balances budgets in order to bring down inflation and interest rates and that cancels all increases in taxes because Canadians cannot afford to pay more. Mr. Trudeau, people's homes, their livelihoods are more important than your political posturing. They're more important than your summer vacation. So join with us. Put partisanship aside. Let's cancel the vacations. Let's cancel the $60 billion or $4,200 per family in inflationary spending and let's get to work in this house to save the houses of those Canadians who are up to their eyeballs of debt in debt after eight years of your government. It is the responsible thing to do. I'm going to inherit this mess as Prime Minister, but I'm going to do everything I can as Leader of the Opposition to mitigate it and make sure that we save the, house, the homes uh, and the financial future of our people. It's the common sense. The common sense of the common people united for our common home. Let's bring it home. Excusez-moi, je pensais que vous aviez fini. Oui. Sur le projet de loi budgétaire, euh, il va passer cet après-midi, présumément. Oui. Qu'est-ce que, qu que vous pouvez ou vous allez faire? Nous, nous, nous allons euh, empêcher le budget inflationniste euh, et irresponsable de Justin Trudeau au Sénat. Nos sénateurs euh, vont travailler aussi longtemps que possible pour empêcher ces 60 milliards de dollars de l'inflation euh, pour sauver euh, les maisons euh, et euh, les finances des Canadiens.
comment? Parce qu'ils ne sont, sont pas majoritaires, donc vous allez faire d'autres filibustiers au Sénat, c'est ça? Tout, euh, tout, on va utiliser tout, euh, tous les outils. In your speech last night, you talked a bit about some ideas you had on climate change. And mm -hmm. I wonder, what would the ultimate climate-related goal of a conservative climate policy look like under your government? Would it be emissions targets? What would be the climate-specific goal that you'd be after? Uh, well, our goal is to remove, reduce emissions, um, but we have the, an inverse approach to the Liberals. They believe in raising the cost of traditional energy we still need. I believe in lowering the cost of carbon-free energy that we want. So let's bring down the cost of hydroelectricity, nuclear power, carbon capture and storage, uh, tidal power, and other green forms of electricity. How do we do that? We have to green light green projects. They had a wonderful tidal power project in Nova Scotia, private sector driven. The company threw up its hands and left because it was six years waiting for, for fisheries and oceans to give them a sign up. A polyev government. Would, green, would remove the gatekeepers and green light these green projects. We need to speed up the approval of small modular nuclear, small modular nuclear reactors. Uh, look, we have to protect safety, but does it take 15 years? What are we going to le learn in years 13, 14, and 15 of a study that we can't learn in years 1, 2, and 3? So Trudeau is saying he wants Saskatchewan, and Alberta, and Nova, New, New Brunswick to shut down coal. Okay, fine, but replace it with what? If he's not going to green light, nuclear power, then how are they going to do that? In Quebec, they need a 100% increase in their, in their electricity grid. But how are they going to do that if the federal government holds up uh, hydroelectric dams for seven, eight, nine years? I would respect Quebec's uh, environmental process and not duplicate it so that we can speed up hydroelectric dam construction. So in other words, let's lower the cost of carbon-free alternatives rather than raising the costs of traditional energy on which Canadians still rely. On va lire la motion et écouter le débat. Je n'ai pas encore eu l'occasion de l'étudier uh, parce que j'étais un peu occupé hier soir, malheureusement. Mais um, en général, moi, je crois qu'il qu nous faut uh, laisser le marché libre déterminer les investissements. Uh, je uh, suis pour, uh, entièrement pu, pour notre secteur uh, pétrolier uh, dans l'Ouest canadien. C'est un très bon secteur qui finance nos services sociaux. En même temps, je ne suis pas un, le, le type de politicien qui favorise uh, des subventions pour n'importe quelle industrie. Je veux que le libre, le libre marché détermine qui reçoit quels investissements et quelle vente uh, de, de produits et services. Sorry, I didn't you were not at the pride flag raising on the hill today. Why was that? I was uh, working last night until midnight uh, fighting against inflation and interest rate hikes. And uh, that, that was my focus, and uh, that's going to continue to be my focus. Would you not, Is that against this, you? you? Are you, you acknowledging now this thought of you wanting to work all summer long in the House of Commons? Is this an acknowledgement that your demands on the government and your filibuster-type speech last night was not successful? It was very successful uh, in appealing to the common sense of the common people. Unfortunately, we don't have a prime minister with a lot of common sense. So, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to work on convincing Justin Trudeau that you can't pour $60 billion dollars of new inflationary spending on an economy that already has high inflation and interest rates, but rather we need a plan to balance the budget, to bring down inflation and interest rates, And to, and to end all of his plans for tax increases. Two very simple demands. Now, the Prime Minister needs to cancel his vacation. I know he loves to vacation. He's probably the Prime Minister most in love with vacations of any Prime Minister we've ever had. In fact, I'm going to be making a contact with the Guinness Book of World Records to find out if there's any other politician in the history of the world who has vacationed as much as him. But could, could he not cancel his summer vacation to fight the inflation that he has caused in our country? Could he not put the, 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 the mortgage payments of ordinary Canadians ahead of his tan or his surfing lessons? I think he could, and that's why we're saying, Justin Trudeau, cancel the surfing, get back to work, get into this house so that we can save the houses of hardworking Canadians by bringing down inflation and interest rates. Last question. For the trans community, what, public safety is a central pillar of what you're trying to campaign on. So what do you make of the increased hostility and threats the trans community is facing right now in Pride Month? I believe every Canadian, regardless of who they are, regardless of their race, sexuality, gender, deserves to be safe. 
and that if anybody commits violence against any other Canadian, then they should be thrown in the slammer. We should have serious consequences for violence committed against any person, regardless of who that person is, regardless of the motive of the crime. And that's why we have to do away with Trudeau's catch and release system, which allows repeat violent reoffenders back out on the street to do harm to, to other people. That, that does not make sense. I'll bring in a common sense criminal justice, just reform that will protect every single Canadian. Let's bring home safety. Thank you very much. French, huh? No, okay, I have it's a great fine. love of the French language, it's okay. but I'm not fluent. It's in okay, language. it's fine. Um, you or your Mr. Poliev mentioned that you want more firefighters, more um, water planes, um, and you want a national plan. Can you just elaborate on what you're asking for and how you intend to ask for it? Well, we're taking a very constructive approach. I mean, in the middle of a natural disaster is not the time to be throwing blame around. So we're taking a very constructive approach. I've had a number of meetings with Minister Blair on this subject. Uh, it's clear, we've seen articles come out this morning that our fleet of water bombers, which are primarily provincial, are aging. Some of them are said to be as old as 50 years. Uh, we also have a shortage of skilled pilots, which we're seeing across uh, the aviation sector, not just in water bombing. And so it's clear that the, uh, we believe the federal government needs to take a greater role in enhancing the capacity and capabilities of the federal government to assist the provinces uh, many of the provinces, such as Alberta, British Columbia, uh, have a very strong record of fighting forest fires because we have a lot of experience with that, uh, as Fort McMurray will attest to. Uh, but we've seen other provinces like Nova Scotia, which haven't had um, as much experience with forest fires, um, really being hit hard recently. And so uh, for the federal government to have these resources uh, to assist uh, in an increased capacity during these uh, so do you think that huge times. Be like a federal, um, for lack of a better word, like task force, because it is provincial. So are you asking funding to go to provinces, or are you asking for like a federal firefighter fleet? We believe that the federal government does need to develop its own unique capabilities. We do have the Canada Interagency Forest Firefighting Center, um, which does a great job of coordinating firefighting resources. So when there's not fires in Alberta and there are fires in Nova Scotia, they can get the resources there quickly. Um, but we do think that, uh, you know, as the years go by and as we uh, possibly see an increase in, in not only the devastation of these forest fires, but the numbers of forest fires, that uh, we um, should have these capabilities ready to go. Last question. At what point do you think we need to move away from leaning so heavily on the military for this and create some kind of domestic national agency that deals with disasters? I think that's definitely, uh, those conversations are ongoing and they need to be seriously looked at. Uh, we've seen models in Australia where they've developed very strong uh, civilian capabilities um, to assist and I think that's something we absolutely uh, need to be looking at as well. Do you think not having what you call a calling for has hampered or, you know, challenged our ability to fight these, these forest fires or compromised our ability to fight these forest fires? Well, I believe our forest, fires on the, our forest firefighters on the front line are doing a fantastic job and uh, we are getting support from across the globe because this is not just a Canada issue, this is a global issue and I'm really pleased to see firefighters from Costa Rica, the United States, France, Spain, among other countries coming here to assist us. Are there some barriers to these uh, countries being able to deploy as quickly as we would want them to into Canada? There are some barriers that do need to be addressed. I have talked to Minister Blair about that and that's something that we can constructively work on. Um, but I think going forward in the future, we do need to seriously look at enhancing federal capabilities. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you.